So the challenge is, how do you get water that's 500 feet down and pretty heavy from that point to the second floor bathroom? About 500 feet below me is a water reservoir, also called the water table. Now the water got there from rain falling onto the earth and going down through layer upon layer of sand, rock, and gravel. But it actually works as the ultimate filter. Now sometimes though, that water going down through there can pick up minerals, and that's what they call hard water. The hole they dug is a straight shaft. In order to get the water to the surface, the well drill has placed a one and a half horsepower pump at the end of a very long pipe. Then drop that pipe to the bottom of the well. An electric cable provides power to the pump, which pushes the water up. To test for hard water, you can have a professional test done, but there's a simple test you can do at home. Take a sample of your water and add a few drops of soap. Now, hard water will not allow any suds to develop. Soft water will let suds happen. Shake it up. Okay. There's no question that that water is soft. Now the local town insists on a professional water test and we had one done here. What this report tells us is that there are no harmful chemicals, no bacteria, and the good news, the water is soft. A water softener is not needed. The water quality in this house is perfectly fine. We don't need a softener, we don't really even need a filter. But we do need to get the water from that well pump 500 feet down to that second floor bathroom. So this is command central. You can see right here that the line comes from the pump right here in a trench. Now that trench has to be down, in this climate, about four feet below the frost line so the water line won't freeze in the winter. And it comes to this point, and this is really the brains of the operation right here. In the old days, we'd have a well pump, and it would be on, either on at full blast or off. And with that, we needed to have a big well tank right here to keep that pump from cycling on and off so much that it would short cycle its life. With this, this thing feels the pressure in the system and brings on the pump just the right amount to keep the pressure constant upstairs. So it's a lot like having cruise control on your automobile. Always keep it, in this case, the system at 60 pounds pressure. So now, there's also a little diaphragm expansion tank here, and that also helps the pump from short cycle too much. But it's much smaller than the big ones we used to need. Now you can see our red and blue lines right here. This is the hot and cold piping, the PEX tubing out to our plumbing fixtures. And there'll be a water heater right here in the corner. Now, there's only one Achilles heel for a well system. That's if you lose electricity, you lose your water. But our electrical expert, Scott Karen, has a solution for that. That's right, Richard. This house is located on the outskirts of town. A big storm could knock out the utility lines, leaving this house with no electricity or water for days. So the Harbs wanted a little self-sufficiency, and they've asked us to install this whole house generator. This is how it works. This is an automatic standby generator, which means when the power goes out, it automatically kicks in. This runs on gas, this particular one on propane. We have a motor here, basically a car engine, which turns the alternator. The alternator sends electricity back to the house. Now, when the electricity comes back on, switches back automatically to the grid, you'll never know it. Heath is the electrician installing the generator. Hey, Heath. Good morning, Scott, how are you? Good. Looks great, tell me what's going on here. Good, we're almost there. So yep. what we've done so far is we started off by putting conduits in the ground yep. to provide uh, power to the generator and for the generator to provide power back to the house. Good, good. Then we poured the pad on top of that. Yeah, it looks good. Got everything ready to go, put the gas line in, have the unit set, battery in, mm -hmm. and just one more step. What's that step? Just gonna pull the final wires from inside the transfer switch All right. to the unit. All right, looks like you got a pull string in there. We do. You need a hand? I do. All right, I'll be out here and you can go inside. Perfect. There are a lot of wires going from the generator inside the house. There's the main power wires that send electricity from the generator into the house during an outage, and there's the communication wires. The communication wires are telling the generator, power's out, go ahead and start. It starts the generator, transfers the utility switch inside, and that's how the house gets electricity. Now our electrician Heath is inside. He's gonna feed the wires out to me right now. I can hear him through this conduit. All set, Scott. Yep. Go ahead. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to get Heath out here to tie in these wires.
So the wires are all tied in outside at the generator. Inside here, Keith is tying the final connections into the transfer switch. So what happens during a power outage or brownout, this switch senses it, starts the generator, the generator sends electricity to this switch. You can't have two sources going to the house, so it disconnects the utility wires and sends power to the house. The generator provides electricity to the entire house, including all the critical loads like the well. However, it's not big enough to supply electricity all at once. This load control module, it says, all right, electric dryer, air conditioner, oven, hold off a second. You don't need to come on yet. Let's get the rest of the house going. And then it pulls them in as they're needed. And then once they're not needed anymore, it may pull them out if the power needs there. Heath, how are you doing on uh, tying everything in? Just about all set. All right, let's fire it up. This is the meter socket. This is where the power comes in from the utility and goes into the house from here. Now we're gonna shut this switch off, which will shut the power off to the house. The car battery inside the generator will start it up. Let's see how it goes. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.